During World War II and the Korean War, was there a difference between your assignments and what you were supposed yes. to do? Yes, yes. And like I stated in World War II, I was in damage control. In the Korean War, they put me on a destroyer. So they shipped us to Japan and then from there, the destroyer that I was assigned to was off the coast of Russia. This was during winter time, extremely cold. And uh, we went out on a ship to meet the destroyer that I was supposed to be on. And they were going to transport me from the ship to the destroyer by a boatswain's chair. That there's a rope on this ship and a rope here. And the ships kept going this way. It was rough and it was very cold. And I had said in my mind that if they called my name to go on that thing, I was going to refuse. And when you refuse things, when you're told to do things in the service, when you re when you refuse to do it, you have you you, you pay dearly for that. But I was not going to get on that chair and end up in that ocean, which is freezing water. I was not going to do that. But finally, the people that were in charge of that finally come to their senses and says, look, this is too rough to do that. So that we went back to, to Japan, and then when the destroyer came back from the coast of Russia down towards the uh, southern part of uh, uh, the Korean peninsula that was out there, and then they brought us back there, and then they finally got us transported to my destroyer, and I was on a destroyer. And what I did there is stuff that I learned here in the reserve was to run the engines. So I was in the engine room, and I was at the board controlling uh, the, the the engines as far as the speed that they were that the uh, the captain wanted from the bridge. They would talk to me and they would send me signals down to do this and do that. Speed it up, decrease it, do this and do that. So that was my job. I used to do that for four hours, uh, four hours on and four hours off. And it was, I, I liked it. I liked my work more in the Korean War than I did in World War II. So did you see more, you saw less combat in the Korean War then? Well, in the did Korean you... War, we were not concerned basically with the uh, with aircraft because we had control of the skies in the Korean War. And what we were doing is that we were trying to destroy the bridges that the North Korean to cut their supplies to come down and fight with the South Korean. So what we, our job was, uh, in the group that I was with, there were six destroyers in, in the group that I was on. So that we would take runs along the shore and then we lodge so many shells of five inch guns to try and knock off bridges and kill people. It's the wall of war is killing people. And then we would take our turn, come around, and uh, there was the, the damage that was uh, there. The uh, North Koreans used to put mines, and they have mines, and a number of times the destroyer that we replaced there hit a mine and, and knocked the bow off. The bow was the first part of the ship. And we replaced that ship. And that ship came back to the U.S. And then when a ship came up to replace us, when it was time for us to come back, uh, the ship that replaced us, be before we were on our way back to the States, we were in Japan. And as we were leaving to come back to the States, the ship that replaced us hit a mine and blew off its bow. So we we're right in the middle, one before and one after, and we nothing happened to us. 
So there were times when they, uh, they would re report that they had seen uh, the North Koreans putting mines up. Mines sometimes are magnetic or by touch. So if the ship touches the mine, it'll blow off. If we go close enough, magnetic, it, the, the, the uh, mine will come up to the ship and blow a hole in it. So it, what we used to do, what we had to do is to kill all the engines and then they would send boats made out of wood so that the uh, uh, the mines, uh, not knowing what the mines were, the, the, uh, the, the, the boats that would pull us away from there were made out of wood so that if the mines were magnetic, the wood, you know, it would interfere so they'd be able to pull us out. So they would pull us out very slowly, uh, a few miles out, and then when we were clear of the mines, when we thought we were clear of the mines, then we would go back to do what we were doing. So we had to be concerned with those things. Um, were there many casualties during the Korean War in your unit? Were there What's that? Were there more casualties in the Korean War in your unit? Than no, the no, unit? no, there was, we, no, there was no, cal no. no casualties, no, because we were basically in control. Were you awarded any, any medals in Korean War as well? Yeah, yeah, certain things we did. We had to repair a condenser in a war zone, so we got a, 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 a uh, there's a medal for that that came from the President of the United States that the ship got. <coughs> <coughs> because we repaired a, 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 the condensing unit, so you guys don't know what that is, but the thing is, <coughs> we repaired it in a war zone, so we got, they paid a medal for it. <laughs> so it was by the president. When you were in the Korean War, was it as strict as it was in World War II, staying in touch with your family wise? Did they cut stuff out when you were trying to write back home? No, no, no. No? No, no, no. Because uh, I, I'm not too sure. We had basically control. The thing is, is that, uh, Everything was in the open. The, the, the captain used to get on the PA system and uh, he used to tell us what we were doing. World War II, they never said anything like that. They wouldn't dare. No, you could write anything you want. But the, the only thing we're doing, we're just shooting shells in there to knock off their roads, knock off their bridges. Uh, if, if these, we had spies on there, they would tell us of us you know, a group of trucks coming down. So then we take right off and they give us an idea of where it was and then a lot because we couldn't see what we were doing. We're just throwing shells over there to knock them out. How was the food in the Korean War? Fine. I had no trouble. I had n I never had any trouble with food. And did you, same thing like in World War II for entertainment when you had hours off, was it the same stuff that you would do? In World War II? Well, in, in the Korean War, we used to go back to Japan, which was like an overnight ride. If you look at the maps, you'll see that the, say the, the Korean Peninsula was here, and Japan is over here. So uh, overnight, we were back in Japan, and then uh, we'd repair parts of the ships or whatever, and then we'd, uh, they'd load it up with ammunition again, and uh, it was basically not. Were there any people that you were in the Korean War that you were also in World War II with? No. That you knew of? No. No. Were there any people that you met off ship during the Korean War? Uh, I, in the mess hall in the Korean War, one time for dinner, and I must think about that because there's a lot of sailors there, and you, you form a line and you keep going and you just, you know, take the seats that are available. One time, for whatever, maybe dinner or whatever it was, I was right in back of a guy. He was, the, the guy in front of me, I couldn't see his face so I didn't know who he was. 
but he was one of the sailors that was aboard ship in World War II. So when he turned around and sat down, and I looked at him, and he looked at me, and I says, well, uh, where the hell have you been, you know? So we had a talk, but that, that's about all. What about any people from Korea that you? No, no. What, so when did you end in the Korean War? What years were you in service during the Korean War? Is that on now? Well, you better turn it off because uh, I'm starting to, you know, start to forget about some of these things. I just remember I went in the Korean War in 1950 and came out in 1953. Okay. The exact days or the months or whatever, I don't know. I don't remember. And what was the name of the ship? USS were... Bori was a destroyer. Uh, DD-704 is what the real name of that destroyer was. Okay. And what did you do when you got back to the, the States after the war? Well, we came back to uh, Norfolk, Virginia, and uh, we were practicing uh, torpedoes shooting with submarines, and we were there for quite a while. And then my time uh, to be discharged was coming up, and uh, the uh, engineering officer called me up and in his stateroom and put a lot of pressure on me to re-enlist. He says they were going to help me because they knew that my English was not that good. I had no, uh, no diplomas, but he said, we will help you get these things. But I was uh, kind of determined to uh, get out. So uh, the next day, uh, a day before I left the ship, again I was the engineer on the boat that runs the engine to take parties, you know, from, the, from where we were to shore. And he was mad at me, so he made me uh, wear a white uniform my white uniform, dress uniform, to operate the boat to take the, a, a party ashore and then back. So therefore, he, he got back at me. He was mad because I would not re-enlist. So therefore, and then from then on, I went to the uh, Naval Station in Norfolk, Virginia. And there I got discharged and uh, they give us money to, on a train to get back home. Did you have any other family members that were in any of the wars? In the, in the war, in World War II, yes, my oldest brother, uh, they called him Pete, and my youngest brother, Raymond, was in the service too. Uh, Raymond was on a destroyer escort, which is smaller than the ship that I was on, and he was in the North Atlantic chasing German submarines. And my oldest brother was, that was World War II now, those two, World War II. And my oldest brother was in the Pacific somewhere. And we never ran into one another. But when we were in battle in the Philippines, when I was, my time to be one hour on the gun, remember I told you before I was one hour on the bridge identifying planes, and then one hour on the gun. Well, right where the gun was, it was a gangplank. They used to bring up casualties from the shore. They would bring them up because we had a lot of doctors aboard ship, and uh, they used to bring them up and try and fix them up so that they could take them from there and bring them back to the States. So one, <coughs> and, and the gun that I was uh, there to load up and shoot was right next to this, so I used to have to, well, I didn't used to have. I would look at the faces, because I knew that my brother was somewhere in the Pacific, but I didn't know where. 
and I used to look at the faces of the soldiers coming up, hopefully not to see my brother. So that was not, that was not a very uh, pleasant experience, that one. Were they both drafted into the war also? Yeah. Yeah, in World War II, it was all drafted up until the time that I got called. We got called. We were drafted, but then we had a choice to where we could go. Mm -hmm. So whether my brother Raymond or Pete, I think my brother, my oldest brother, I think he had no choice. He was told to go in the army. That's where you go. Whether Raymond had a choice, I don't know. I know I had a choice. Was were any of your sisters? Yes, Elnora. She, she was uh, what they call waves World in War the II? Navy. And she worked in Washington in the Navy Department somewhere. That's all I know of what she did. And then for World War II, was there anything else that you remembered while you were discussing the Korean War that you forgot to add in? Well, there's a number of things that happened. We used to get mail with submarines. Sometimes we'd go out at sea and meet submarines and get mail. And sometimes we would give mail to them if they were going to Pearl Harbor. If they were coming from Pearl Harbor, they give us mail. Uh, there were times when we would we, we would get caught, and then they would uh, a, a German a, a, a Japanese submarine had been spotted in the area, and we were not we were in an area where we shouldn't be. It was where that submarine was. They would send planes with depth charges and everything to circle around and then shit, they would send destroyers over to help us get away from there so that they wouldn't, you know, the submarine wouldn't get at us because they, if, there's a, if they have a choice, they're not going to shoot at a small ship, they're going to shoot at a big one. And we were the big one. So we got some tight spots once in a while, but uh, we went through it. Were there any any people that you remember meeting while you were in World War II, while you were in the Pacific at all? In the Philippines? The little girl? Yeah. In the Philippines, we were working between Manila and Subic Bay. So if you're looking at the Philippines, Manila's over here and Subic Bay is over here. Towards Japan, towards, uh, away from Japan. And I'm not too sure what we were doing, but we were going back and forth. When we had uh, Liberty in the Philippines, we ran into a lady with, with this little girl. And we talked with them, started talking with them, whatever. And then from then on, every time we come over, we told the lady that we would give her money so that she could buy stuff for the little girl. And we did that uh, oh, quite a few times. Every time we went back to between uh, Subic Bay and Manila. Every time we went there, we would look them up and then we would give the money to the lady so that she would buy something for the little girl. We did that a number of times, two of us. So therefore, what are, I'm not too sure. I, where you want to go from here, but that's the story of the little girl. I would like to think that she's probably living today. Mm -hmm. After the both wars, after the Korean War and you came back here, what happens then? What jobs did you, like, did you start a job? Did you join any veteran um, organizations, stuff like that? Well, I uh, got a job at uh, Pratt & Whitney. And I worked there, I worked there quite a few years. And uh, basically that's what I did, work in front, wasn't he? Not too sure what else. Does the Veterans Association still help you? Pardon? Does the Veterans Association still help you? I don't know what you're saying. Veterans Association, the government,
take care of me very well. Anytime I need any kind of medications or whatever, all I have to do is go to the VA. And they take care, they'll, uh, you know, uh, if, I, if I need something, if I don't feel well, the doctors are there, they, uh, I don't know what you're... Look my way. The, huh? While I was in the service, in, the, uh, in World War II, uh, I had my tonsils removed at the uh, Naval Shipyard in Brooklyn. And uh, in the Korean War, one morning I couldn't walk. So the varicose veins were really blowed up. So they put me on a stretcher and they took me to the uh, naval, uh, naval station in Long Island and they operate on both my legs. Since I've been out of the service, any time that I have any kind of a problems, other than dental, they don't do anything dental unless I was hurt in the service dentally. <laughs> dentally. Uh, the uh, government provides everything for me. Medications, whatever, is very little. What they charge me is nothing compared to what people pay on the outside. And all I have to do is to call if I want to see somebody. In an emergency, I can go to either West Haven or Newington and walk right in in an emergency. Other than that, all I have to do is either go there or make a phone call and then they'll arrange, they'll send me a letter and set me up on a uh, uh, a schedule to go and see somebody. And uh, they take care of everything. They take care of me very well. And being in World War II and the Korean War, what was the best experience you had out of being in both of those wars? What's one thing you told your family all the time that you got to do? Oh boy, there's a lot of things I'm not too sure. Well, you got to see. I, I saw the world. I've been around the world. I went from from uh, New Zealand all the way around to Australia. So I saw a lot of a lot of the world. And uh, I'll, that's something I'll never forget. That's something I often think of, all the places that I have been. And there are times I say, how the hell did I get there? Well, I know how I got there. I was aboard ship in the Navy. And uh, it was really, it was really quite an experience just to see all these foreign countries. Uh, the money was different in some of these places. That was kind of tough. But other than that, we were always treated well. All these, where, where we went, we were always treated well. And uh, that's about it as far as that. Were there ever any reunions from there, each of the ships that there, you got together with the people there that There were wanted? reunions, but I never went to them. There was one here not too long ago. And uh, some of these reunions from what I from what I hear, uh, you meet and then you go on trips and seeing things. And I've done that before, so I, 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 I feel like I probably, would, uh, I probably would see guys that I knew before, but it's altogether different now. So you have different ideas, uh, different uh, interest mm -hmm. so that the last one that they had here not too long ago I talked with the uh, person that was in charge of that it was a lady from Massachusetts and she said that her husband was on the USS Blue Ridge and uh, he had passed away and uh, I told her that uh, when, when she goes to the meetings whatever what I would like for her to do 
is to tell the group from the USS Blue Ridge that I call her and she knew my name, I gave her my name, whatever, and that I was doing fine. I was getting up in years like they are, but other than that, everything was fine. And you found out about those reunions through a magazine yeah, that you get the, monthly? The Disabled by... American mm -hmm. Veterans Magazine. Okay. That's where I would get okay. the information okay. as to uh, when they had meetings. And out of everywhere you have been in the world, do you have a favorite place that you can say favorite? Australia. Obviously, you were in the war, so there were different times. Australia. Australia. Yeah. Yeah. When yeah. were you in Australia? Pardon? When were you in Australia? In World War II. We were there for quite a while. And uh, it was nice. We were treated nice. And uh, it was quite a place. So different, different than today. Mm -hmm. They've changed quite a bit. But in Sydney, Melbourne, Townsville, uh, Victoria, I think it was Victoria, the, the, the capital. Those are the cities, the places I went to in, when I was in Australia.